This was sold as a way to end cycles of boom and bust, but after the implementation of the Fed, boom and bust cycles have actually been worse than before the Fed. So what is the economy? It is the conglomerate of billions of individual transactions every day. To think that anyone can manage it is a foolhardy venture. was a terrible year for liberty. Not only did we get the Federal Reserve, but we also got direct election of U.S. Senators with the 17th Amendment and the income tax with the 16th Amendment. U.S. Senators were previously chosen by the state legislatures, thus giving states an important check on the power of the federal government. The balance of power was removed by the 17th Amendment. The income tax has been and continues to be the fuel for the massive explosion of federal spending. The bulk of this spending is in areas where the federal government should play no role. IRS regulations are almost 10,000 pages in length. No one can understand them, particularly nominees for the current cabinet. The amount of money and time we taxpayers spend complying with these regulations is revolting. So the most successful third party in American history was, can anyone guess? The Socialist Party. In 1912, their presidential candidate received 6% of the popular vote. And although they, for the most part, went away and melted into the two major parties after it became unpopular to be a socialist, they were absolutely effective because eventually every plank in their platform was passed into law. Next came alcohol prohibition in 1919. It has been called the noble experiment. This experiment was a miserable failure. It is a great example of the fact that all government action has unforeseen negative side effects. Prohibition was not repealed due to people suddenly concluding that alcohol was not so bad, it was repealed because people were fed up with the crime, the violence, drive-by shootings, corruption of the police and government, and the fact that gangsters and criminals were becoming rich and powerful. In 1933, the New Deal included unprecedented government interference in banking, money, farming, and make-work projects. Then in 1935 came social insecurity. At the time, there were 42 workers for every retiree. Now there are three workers for every retiree, and we are heading to soon be two workers. This is unsustainable. It is a Ponzi scheme. Current recipients are paid by those currently contributing. If any business did what the government does with Social Security, those people would be prosecuted and put in prison. <laughs> Payroll withholding of taxes came during World War II and has been with us ever since. 
This has been particularly insidious because people now are unaware of how much they actually pay in income taxes. They only look at take-home pay and are actually happy when they get a tiny, tiny amount of their own money back from the government. We should eliminate withholding. If people had to cut that check once per year, then you would see people getting seriously upset about the growth of government. Taxes have gone to the point if you take the income tax, Social Security tax, Medicare tax, state sales and income tax, property taxes, the gasoline tax, hidden taxes that businesses pay at every step of the manufacturing process and then pass on to the next company in the chain and many, many others, the level of taxation in America today is more than serfs pay in the Middle Ages. Do you believe this country was founded on a tax revolt? Of course, any taking and spending by government is less efficient than that done by the free exchange of willing participants. If you doubt that, just look at the things they are funding, the inefficiency, waste, and fraud in any government operation. With all this talk about stimulus, can you imagine what we could do if we could just get the government off our backs? <laughs> Next day, Medicare and Medicaid, 1965. This started out small, but like all government programs, it grew out of control. Today, 51% of the money in healthcare comes from federal, state, or local government. Regulations and paperwork are overflowing, and everyone's scratching their head trying to figure out what the problem is. For goodness sakes, it's staring us right in the face. We already have a pseudo-socialist system. We don't need more government involvement in healthcare. We need less government. Of course, in 45 years, government meddling has driven up the cost to five times what it would cost in a free market. And every step of the way, the politicians blame the free market as the culprit and as the excuse to continuous, continuously expand government's role. Adjusted for inflation, seniors now pay more for health care than they did before Medicare. In 1971, Richard Nixon declared drug abuse pu public enemy number one and thus began the war on drugs in earnest. I call it the forgotten war, but it still rages. It is yet another in a long line of failed government programs that destroy liberty. It has resulted in absolute violations of the Bill of Rights, search and seizure laws, asset forfeiture, asset forfeiture laws, where in many cases no one is ever charged with a crime, and government snooping into our bank accounts. It is used as an excuse to infringe on our right to keep and bear arms. Drug prohibition needs to be repealed, not because drugs are okay, but because just like alcohol prohibition, the illegality is the cause of the crime, the violence, the drive-by shootings, the corruption of the police and the government, the degradation of freedom, the $62 billion price tag, the absolute chaos that is occurring at our southern border, and the fact that it makes gangsters, criminals, drug dealers, and indeed terrorists rich and powerful. Heaven forbid, ladies and gentlemen, that a weapon of mass destruction ever crosses our southern border and annihilates one of our cities. You will have the war on drugs to thank because this was the incentive for drug dealers to devise ways to smuggle entire trucks of contraband across the border. Now recently major financial institutions got into trouble and the solution was to put the government in charge of it. But if, have you seen the way the government conducts its own affairs? Folks, this is putting the fox in charge of the henhouse. Government spends money it doesn't have, it runs up insane debt, and raids supposedly secure accounts that were set aside for a specific purpose. Some say what, what, happened, was rec what happened recently was a failure of the free market. That is laughable. We don't have a free market in this country anymore. We have big business joined at the hip to big government.